welcome to Thought for the Week. Well, perhaps like us, your Christmas cards have already started dropping through the letterbox. And along with them can come a lot of these, the appeal letters. And if they're not coming through the letterbox, perhaps you've seen them on email or a pop-up. And of course, this year more than ever, the charities need a lot of help. And the people that are supported by these charities, they're needing a lot of comfort and hope. Well, what's our response? Of course, it's all too easy to be completely overwhelmed. There are so many, we don't know where to start. Perhaps we just dismiss them. Perhaps we think, well, we already give to a lot of charities. Perhaps we just really don't quite know what to do. Maybe we feel guilty. Maybe we feel challenged. Well, as we continue our theme of hope, this week we're thinking about hope through involvement. And so the Open the Book team are going to bring to us the story of Gideon. Let's have a look. Gideon was hiding. Where was he hiding? In a pit for crushing grapes, of course. No one would look for him there. Why was he hiding in the wine press? Because Gideon was scared. He was scared of the army of the Midianites. They were everywhere, taking animals and food so that everyone in Israel would go hungry. Gideon hoped it would all stop soon. He hoped that someone would come and rescue the Israelite people from the enemy. Whilst he was hiding, an angel from God came to him and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Gideon looked round, hoping the angel was talking to someone else. Me? Yes, you are strong. Now go and save the Israelites from the Midian army. Now go. Well, Gideon hoped he'd heard it wrong. Well, you can't mean me. I mean, my family's the least important in Israel. And, well, I'm the least special person in my family. How, how can I hope to save Israel? If you really mean me, then give me a sign. I'll place a big piece of wool on the ground. And if in the morning it's dry and all the ground around it is wet, then I'll know that you mean to send me. Gideon went to sleep, hoping the wool would be wet too. He hoped he wouldn't have to do anything. But when he woke up next morning, he found the ground covered with dew wet and soggy on his feet but there was the wool dry as a bone Gideon realized God must be serious so Gideon set off as God's leader and gathered a large army 32,000 men to defeat the Midianites he hoped it would be enough soldiers but God spoke to him and said Gideon, you've got too many men. Gideon hoped God was kidding, but God carried on. Gideon, ask all of your soldiers if any of them are afraid. If any of them are, then you should let send them home. So Gideon did what God asked, hoping no one would go. But as soon as he spoke to his men, 22,000 of them left for home. Gideon was worried and hoped it would still be enough. God wasn't finished yet. He told Gideon to take the men to drink at a nearby stream, saying to him, Watch the men drink. Anyone who drinks from water with their hands like a cup, keep them. Those who put their mouths in the stream to drink, well, you can send them home. You won't be needing them. Gideon hoped they would all drink from their hands. He was really disappointed when only 300 men used their hands. There were so few of them. How could God expect him to win now? He hoped that God would ask someone else to take over. He hoped it would be anyone but him. 
He told God how he felt. How can we win? There's so few of us and there's thousands of them. But God had a plan and he told Gideon what it was. Gideon led his army and circled the enemy camp in the middle of the night whilst they were all asleep. They carried trumpets and pots with fires inside. When everyone was ready, they blew their trumpets oh! loud and threw their pots and shouted, For God and for Gideon! 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 The Midianites woke suddenly all confused. There was fire and noise and they rushed about fighting each other, tripping over their tents and each other too. And then they ran and ran, scared and screaming. And when it all went quiet, the Midianite army was gone. Gideon hoped someone would save Israel. He hoped it would be someone strong and brave. He just hadn't realised that person would be him. I think the acting and the videos are just brilliant. They really help to bring the Bible stories to life. So the Israelites, of course, they're under threat from the Midianites. And we first encounter Gideon hiding in the wine press, scared, not wanting to be involved. But God seeks him out. And God has a habit of doing that. Gideon is living in fear of attack, like all the Israelites. And so when the angel appears to him in the wine press, after the initial shock of being confronted by the angel, he may well have expected some words of hope and comfort. But no, the angel said, you have the strength. You go and save the Midianites. Well, Gideon wasn't exactly raring to go, was he? Oh, he said, um, well, how can I do that? I, I'm weak. I'm, I'm really un unimportant. Why, why me? And then after the excuses, he wants convincing that God really wants him to go. So he checks it out with the fleece. Not once, but twice. And when he's finally convinced that God really wants him to go and save the Midianites. He has to gather his army, which of course is too big and needs to be reduced. Well, by this time, God, Gideon seems a bit more willing to comply with God's instructions. He's learning to trust God more. And so he gathers his small army and defeats the Midianites. And later on in the book of Judges, of course, we read that the Midianites did not cause trouble anymore and the land had peace for 40 years. Well, when the angel spoke to Gideon, the Israelites had been hoping for change and a better future, like many of us, especially just now. And their hope is actually fulfilled through God's intervention and the reluctance, obedience and involvement of Gideon. Or we may be in a position where we need hope just now. We keep praying, but things are slow to change. And yet hope can sometimes come in the most unexpected ways. Perhaps a phone call, a message of encouragement, a Bible verse that jumps out of us, or a comment that really speaks to us, or perhaps even an unexpected gift. In the prayer course, which we've been looking at on Monday evenings, Pete Gregg talks about incremental prayer and sometimes our prayers are answered bit by bit. It may not be a huge dramatic answer but a step in the right direction. Sometimes we may be the hope that someone else needs. Often when praying or walking God will bring a situation or person to, to mind and I think, oh, I must message that person. I must say something. Or maybe it's, oh, I really think we should send a gift to that person. And then it's all too easy to forget until God nudges me again. So perhaps today, God is challenging us or this week to act on those prompts. And then, of course, what about all these letters requesting financial support? All for good causes. 
Every person supported by these organisations needs hope. So the guy on this front one here, he writes, watching people walk by and not notice you, it just drives you deeper into feeling worthless. So when we hear about the many needs on the news or see the fundraising pages on Facebook or the charity appeals, perhaps we just need to pause and ask God what he wants us to do, what he wants me to do. And of course, in the wine press, Gideon questioned the angel. And perhaps we need to do that as we pray and discern where and how we can be someone else's hope.